Hi everybody. Hi everybody. My name is Howard. And this is this is Lounge Academy. I'm gonna try to try to speak up. I think I see what the problem is here. The mic is kind of on the wrong side of me because I'm looking over here and the mic is here. It's okay. This is going to be uh Episode 5, I believe, uh, lesson number 5, episode 3 of Mindless Piano Practicing. It's also episode 1 of me drinking beer while practicing. I, it is not something I commonly do. In fact, in fact, I cannot remember another time that I did. It's very good. This is in, uh, it's the only thing that's here. Usually I have something, I usually do drink some sort of beverage when I practice, um, especially when I'm doing the, the vocal workout part of my practice, which I have not yet um, televised as a, as a lesson. That would take a few beers, in fact, to do that, but it won't tonight. We won't be doing that. But this, this, I want to point out something about this. This is one of my uh, innovations. You'll notice, I'll talk up because now I'm away from the mic. You'll notice the uh, ice, there's ice in this beer. And it's because it's frozen to the bottom of the glass. And the ice will stay submerged below the beer, or, or below whatever beverage is in this glass. This is, a, again, it's my own innovation. I, I'm not claiming it as any kind of invention. Uh, there could, could have been hundreds or thousands before me that have done this, but, but I thought it up, and uh, it's, it's nice. It keeps whatever beverage you have ice cold it does not dilute it as much as if there's ice floating in the beverage, which would have more surface area because more sides. This just has one flat surface. Um, that's the area of the inside of this circle. If you remember your geometry formulas, you could probably post that. But what this is about, it's not about, it's not about beer or anything like that, or frozen glasses. This is about learning how to uh, improvise. I assume that's why you're watching, or you want to maybe understand more about the way you already do improvise. Well, every day I try to practice a half an hour of just mindless playing, where I, I try not to play any songs or too many songs. It's okay if you do, but the point of it is that you, you don't want to be encumbered by following a roadmap. It's good to kind of play games with yourself and try to picture spontaneous chord symbols popping up in front of you and you have to then go into that, you know, and, and keep it flowing like a song. One, one thing I, tr I do is um, I kind of keep track, you know, just kind of in the back of my mind. It kind of starts happening automatically. A kind of a song structure. So, you know, like I'm, I'm aware of, I'm not counting, but I'm aware of when the turnarounds are. You know, you've done your eight and your sixteen, and and then something happens, and I find that very helpful because when I use the product of these just as aimless filler, if I'm playing a job and want to talk or something, or 
just stretch or, or just enjoy playing between songs without playing a song or kind of playing along to the choreography of the human beings walking through the room. You can give it a little bit of structure by keeping track of a normal strong song structure so that you know when the song ends and when it goes back to the top again and you do a little turn around and people key into that and they, they, they just think you're playing a song that maybe maybe they're not familiar with or lots of times they think you are playing a song they're familiar with. People are always telling me what song I'm playing and it's news to me. a mindless half hour. I'm already six minutes into it because I've been talking a lot. I'm showing you my beer. And I'll just I'll just mouth off and tell you just things I'm thinking, things that are occurring to me. As they happen, if they happen. seen my my other three lessons in mindless practicing what you do is you just keep stretching out every day you know you get little it's built on mistakes and accidents really and a little bit of creativity but nothing's as creative as a mistake and those mistakes become part of your inventory of vocabulary Not just for playing freely like this, but even more importantly, so that when you when you open up uh, a fake book or, or play along to a song whose ar architecture you you committed to memory as far as chords and maybe the lyrics if you're a singer, then you this is the you you pour into the song. So rather than arranging the song as if you're composing within the song be more spontaneous and more you and people respond to you being you the less barriers that are there there's a there's a, a realness that people respond to if you're not you know it's like the difference between speaking and reciting you know if you memorize something and say it it, it has that acting what do actors want to do? They want to sound spontaneous. We make this so it's not even acting. It goes beyond acting. It becomes reality. In order to do that, you got to be spontaneous and find out your voice. And you, you develop it. You develop all these little tricks. Go into your bag of tricks. start thinking in terms of, of, of your inventory. Your, your ear will hear the things that you've got under your, under your fingers. And they'll slip right into songs. And those will be the, the accompaniment or the filler, you know, between uh, pauses and lyrics or, or pauses in, in the melody. So you could be you could be as repetitious as you want when you're practicing these, but I don't I don't go to the extent I don't recommend working them out. Let them go by if you like something and it'll 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 resurface. It's in there somewhere. You're better off being very clumsy and making a lot of mistakes because then you learn how to trip and fall very gracefully to where people think it's planned and part, part of the 
you know, you, you can make it so good that it's musical. And then you never have to fear making a mistake. Which is saying quite a bit, right? It's what everybody's afraid of. With this system, you can be fearless, almost fearless. The hard part is still remembering the framework of a song, just to memorize the chord, chord changes, to really internalize it, because there's so much multitasking going on. That's something brand new that's developing for me, is to play like block chords in my right hand, but only using three fingers, where they would more, more typically be octaves with a couple notes in the middle, inner voices. I started leaving out the pinky recently and doing something a little bit different with the internal voices. And I, I really don't think it through as far as, in fact, don't, don't think about modes and scales. I mean, you can do that when you're working on that stuff. But when you're doing this exercise every, every day, don't think of what mode is going to work with a, a you know, with a chord. Or don't don't be theoretical like that or mathematical or formulaic. There's a certain amount of theory of harmony that. Um, it's always with you. But don't go out of your way to, to be formulatic and mathematical. afraid to try to um, purposely overplay when I'm doing this half hour exercise because in part it's a technical exercise too you know like doing Hannon and Cherney and things only with these you're doing things that you'll directly use that are kind of your own inventions that you could pour into your songs When you're then doing a number, you don't necessarily want to play with the same um, 
thickness, you know, of notes. You don't want the page to be black. yourself you can get very sparse it's actually much easier you want to make it easier for yourself to play piano then sing you could really lay back with your piano it makes it a lot easier you'd think it would be harder because you're doing one more thing and it is at first much easier if you, you know, if I, if I just play solo piano, which I do once a week at the hotel next door, an hour, an hour and a half, it's pretty fatiguing. And it's not like I'm trying to be Oscar Peterson or anything. I'm just, I'm just playing along, you know, but it, it's, it's taxing, you know, because I don't know, you're just doing a lot more playing because you don't want it to sound empty. If, you're, if I'm singing, I could go four hours, like we do every Friday night on Lounge Academy Live. I often do that, depending on the guests we have in the studio, or not. Sometimes it's just me. You can tune into that. It's on my Facebook wall. Every Friday night from 7 to 11 on the East Coast, we're in Buffalo, New York. If you go to my Facebook wall, I might have it there in my information, but it's it's facebook.com slash slash Goldman Howard, because my name is Howard Goldman, so I was the second one on Facebook probably. So if you just reverse my name, facebook.com slash Goldman Howard. So after seven o'clock, thereabouts, we go we go live and you can comment say how you found out about us and make requests and get to know all the lounge cadets that are here and if anybody ever wants us to put it on YouTube the same way live at, at that point we'll do it I tried it a couple of times nobody watched Facebook we got quite a pretty good following Necessarily because you're trying to work them out, you know what I mean? You can do them until they feel comfortable. I like to work out stress. You don't want any stress. Muscle stress, that is. You do want it, but then you want the release in between the stress. It could take years to learn how to do that if you're having that issue and most pianists do and me considerably so but I've been conquering it the past year I've really it's one of the techniques is make sure you stop pressing after you hit the note if you think of release once you hit that you'll find it really relaxes the muscles and it gives them that that rests so that you're not
See, it sounds kind of like some kind of song. It's not. It's your own song. And then you pour this stuff into whatever you're trying to make an arrangement for. Because it'll do that by itself. Let's get out of F. I'm too comfortable in F. Another thing that's important is not worrying about learning too many keys. For the, um, you know, for the jazz era, for the first half of the 20th century and a little beyond, and, and even today, you're playing out of, um, out of these fake book type books. This isn't the fake book. I've got the fake book. This is one I like better for what I do. Yeah, it's got all the lyrics and the verses and it's easy to read. But um, you'll notice um, they're not in all the keys. They're in very few keys. You've got like no flats to, so you'll, you'll be from like uh, three flats to one sharp. That's it. So you'll have C. And then you'll have things in B. A lot of things are, I mean, in F. One flat. Right? And then you'll have things in two flats, which is B flat. Not that many, though. Not that many. Of course, you could, you know, depending on what your vocal range is, you might wind up transposing a lot of things, but. But it's nice if you get, get rangy enough where you don't have to do that. You can leave them alone. These are written, most of these are written for male, male ranges. So if you happen to be a male, you're in luck. Here's one that comes to mind that's in uh, B flat. My foolish heart. sing the crap out of moon. I didn't do it there, but that's a lesson too. You always milk the heck out of the word moon. You see the word moon coming in any ballad or anything? Take a deep breath and just hold it as long as you can. You can't go wrong. It's a great formula. I'll show you. How was the ever constant moon take care so there's there's two flats and then E flat is more common than B flat, but there's a lot of B flats. So learn learn everything. Go through your you know six two five ones in E flat as well. key of E flat. A flat, not so much, but enough to where you're, you're going to want to be comfortable with that one. Here's, here's something comes to mind in A flat. It's impossible Tell the sun to leave the sky It's just impossible Impossible. Ask a baby not to cry. It's just impossible. Beyond that, then you know, then you go to uh, four flats. Never happens. I mean, five flats. You won't. It won't happen. So you learn, like from G. 
which is one sharp to uh, the A flat. <clears throat> as far as the circle of fifths go, you only need that part of the circle. Now you are going to encounter the rest of them within songs. You know, where songs modulate. But that's okay, because you're going to know all the chords. You're going to know all the chords and all the voicings. Especially if you learn the 60 chord song system I talked about in lesson one. You'll know all these and you'll be able to do your uh, 6251s in every key. But what I'm saying is you don't want to um, you don't want to worry about it having to beat every key to death, you know? Know all the chords and all the all the voicings for all the all the chord forms so that you could you could play in any key and understand it. But um, you don't have to get it under your fingers as far as doing Giving all your favorite licks, you know, you learn learn something. Don't. I, I don't agree with then taking that and okay, let's learn it twelve times, you know, and then, you know, you're never playing in B, <laughs> you know. It's just not if you do the kind of kind of gigs I do and the kind. Of, if you're a studio session artist, studios. Session guy, hired gun. Yeah, you better you better know everything there is to know. That's different. You guys aren't watching me. everything fits together. I saw her lips next to mine, so I kissed her. She didn't mind it at all. When I'm awake, such a break never happens. How long can a guy go on dreaming? If there's a chance Baby, say it and make my, make my crazy dreams come true. Say it and make my crazy dreams true. You see, Mary sending me a little message. A little bubble head popped up. No, that's not a little lovebird name, Bubblehead. That's not a nickname. Her little bubblehead on Facebook popped up and, and a little message just said, I'm in intermission. She's at the opera tonight. It scared me when I saw it. I thought she was going to say, hey, I'm home early. Come on home for dinner. Which, of course, has its positives, but I feel like practicing a little more. Many of you know Mary from Friday night, my co-host here at Lounge Academy.
clear day. Rise and look about you, and you'll see who the heck you are. On a clear day, how it will astound you that the goal of your being outshines every star you feel part of. Every mountain, sea, shore, hear from far and near. This song always sounds like a telethon to me. On that clear day, you can see forever and ever, evermore. That ending was like throwing paint at a wall or paint at a canvas. And the results were about the same too, right? That's okay though. If you don't sound like garbage when you're doing this, if you're not sloppy and hitting walls and dead ends, and then... Um, then you're not doing it right. The one thing you shouldn't do though, if you, when you do screw up, if you stop, if you break the rhythm, that's the only mistake you could make, okay? That's a mistake. And I make, I do that, but it's a mistake. You know, you could change your time as long as you're conscious about it, you know? You could be, okay. In fact, that's a good thing to do. Just be conscious of it. You could even go out of time, just kind of go, go free. But know you're being free when you do it. You're either in time or not. Then you go into time. When you go in, you're in. Because that communicates a lot to people. That's an interesting thing. I noticed that with mentors of mine that um, they could be playing with a loose time, like maybe it's the introduction of a song or the, the first few bars, and for effect, you know, they, they, they do, uh, they, they're, they're not keeping a, 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 a tempo. And then when they do go in, bang, they're in, and before they're in, you're right there along with them. It's almost, that, that's always amazed me. It's part of the magic of when this stuff works, of what music is, is that it's not just the notes that are transmitted through the air to our ear and communicate certain things that we all agree on their meaning somehow. But it's, it's, it's the space too. And, it, and it's the intention to play something is communicated before it's played. That's the part that, that doesn't make any sense to me. But when I see it happen, I know it's happening for sure. And uh, one of the places it does that with somebody who's really good with that is when they're, they're being free. Guy Valeri does that very effectively. He'll be going along and all of a sudden 
I don't know, his heel comes down or something and bang, he's into this time. And you get it, you actually get it before he does it. You're right there with him, just as a listener. Somehow it's communicated. It's already uh, 36 minutes, folks. You guys make these half hours go fast for me. Personal accompanist at a, in a musical, where they'll have that that uh, that that bounce, that give me a bouncy C bounce. All right, well I'll let you go for another day. I'm going to get on to the. Uh, I'm having a ball here. I'm going to get on to the rest of my practicing um, with with without you guys. I'll miss you. But uh, I got to do some things that just would not translate very well, like bel canto exercises and things like that. And uh, it's just, you know, like the, the uh, emergency medical technicians in the audience and people that are used to, you know, seeing things that the rest of us don't want to see, they'd probably be okay with watching me rehearse my singing, but for. Uh, for regular folks, it's too much to ask. So we'll be back. Leave me some messages and comments. And uh, I didn't really explain that much about what this was about because it's what the third or fourth one practice that I, I'm doing um, the, the of my five lessons so far. So if you watch like the first one or the first one or two, you'll you'll be you'll be ready to. Like, I need to take poison or something. I don't know. You, you might like it. You might apply it to your own philosophy. It breaks a lot of tradition with what we learn in school about how to improvise. And I'm not taking any way, anything away from that. I'm not telling you you should like stop doing anything your teachers uh, showed you or things you're learning, ways of practicing. This is just something... On top of that, on top of all that, if you get in ideally a half hour of non-directed thinking, playing every day, it builds up this big ball of you, it snowballs, and that's what your song sounds like. You, you find that you, you develop a sound, you know, because you're not trying to necessarily copy anybody when you do it. It just kind of finds its own way. So, and it doesn't have to be. It doesn't have to seem like you're being, you know, like tremendously creative. I've, I, what I believe is that if you're just, if you really sound genuine, like it's you, even if you don't think you've, you've got that much to say musically, people pick up on the genuineness of it more than the, more than the, the creative. It, it's true in my own uh, observations. So you do that, people never get tired of watching you perform.
producere 